Hey fellow achievers, if you are new here, welcome. And if you are not, welcome back. I am Ellen, I go by Coach Ellen Online, and I am a burnout and stress management coach. And today we are gonna be talking all about how I plan my week using Notion and Google Calendar. I'm so excited to dive into this. If you love these topics that we're getting into, go ahead and don't forget ever to hit that subscribe button and comment with your favorite tips, any questions you've got, or perhaps any templates you'd like to see. But with that, let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so I'm really excited to show you guys all of this today. This is literally something I do every single week. And the first thing I do whenever I plan my week is I go in and I do a weekly review. Okay, I've actually already done my weekly review for this week. So this is going to be a relatively short and sweet little walkthrough of what I do for a weekly review. If you're interested, I've actually already gone in on my website and I've created a blog post where I talk about my entire review process, why I think it's so worthwhile. I think there's something you can learn from each and every week in terms of how things are going. So how I go about doing that is I sit down every single week and I ask myself three very simple but very powerful questions. I ask myself, what went well? So you can kind of see it here. What worked, or what went well or what worked this week? What didn't work this week? And what can I improve next week? And this, I find no matter what, I'm able to identify something here over the course of the process that is helpful information for me. It could be, you know, something about my self-care habits aren't working or something about my productivity aren't working, or maybe I'm kind of just over committing myself in terms of tasks or responsibilities, whatever. I catch those things and I pick up on those things in doing this weekly review. But this is step one because this kind of helps me determine if there's anything that I need to tweak for the next week moving forward. Step two of this entire process is then I go over to my main dashboard inside of my Notion and I set intentions and I set goals for the week. But I go in here and I just kind of use this little weekend, weekly check-in section and this goals of the week section to kind of just narrow my focus. What are some of my intentions and my goals for this week? So this is kind of the next thing that I do. And again, it's really just kind of to make sure that I am staying on top of and keeping these things at the forefront of my mind. One of the things, this is actually kind of a little bonus thing that I wanna show you in here, that I can also check into is my habit tracker. And this might actually relate back to some of the things that came up when I was doing my reviews back over here, like some of the what went well, what didn't go well, what worked, what didn't work. Those things might come up in terms of habit. So I really like having the easy access to my habit tracker because I might add or remove certain habits in here, um, depending upon kind of what came up in some of those previous reviews. I'm actually going to hide this from the view so that you can actually see it. I really, really like this habit tracker because I can very easily go in and just check things off. I can go in and click on the name if I really, really need to, but just by these like symbols, I know what each of these habits are and whether or not I went in and I actually did them. I'm actually, this is making me realize that I have not started drinking water today and it's 1230 as I record this. I'm doing 75 hard right now. So just a second, let me go fill up my water. All right, now that we got that taken care of, what I really, really like about this is I have this set up over here to automatically calculate how I'm doing with my um, habits over the course of the month. Now it's a little inaccurate when you're only partway through the month, but as you start to get toward the end of the month, you really start to see, you know, how have I been doing? with all of these habits. And actually, again, you can't see it because I'm inside of Notion on the actual um, web browser version of it. And it just kind of is showing up a little bit weird, but I have over here, I have a kind of how I'm doing rating. And it tells me like what percent I'm at in terms of how many habits I've completed for that particular day. So then as I go in and like update this, if I were to say, cool, I journaled, cool, I checked into my community, it increases the percentage. But anyways, let's get back to the actual planning. So once I have done my weekly review and once I have done this little weekly check-in to set goals and intentions, which I will totally admit is not planning, but it is kind of just part of my process. The next thing that I do is I go in and I jump over to my Google Calendar. I check into my Google Calendar. And the point of this next step 
let the, my video jump over to the point of this next step is to really make sure that I'm not overloading myself with too many tasks on a very busy day. Now I've gone through and I have redacted all of my students' names in my day job. I'm a professional tutor. So I work with students, obviously for privacy reasons, I'm removing their names, even though it's just their first names. Um, but this is a really, really important step because my notion system automatically populates each day with the tasks that I are the tasks that I have tentatively scheduled for that day. It is all tentative. I assign a ballpark due date um, for the things in my task management system in Notion. With the exception of client work, I have very, very few tasks that I do for my business that are actually like set in stone. And my day job requires very little outside work outside of the sessions and appointments that I have with my students. That being said, if I have a really, really busy day in my day job, I don't want to overload myself with tasks for my business on that day. So I have to take that into consideration. So for example, let's take a look at this week. So I really need to take things into consideration on Thursday and Friday of this week because I have a memorial for my grandpa who passed this past spring on Thursday morning and I'm going paddle boarding with a friend. And this is super important on Friday because I rescheduled on her before. So I have everything all in one calendar, which I know for some people feels chaotic, but it's really important for me for managing my overwhelm to see everything in one place. So I know everything I have on my plate. Like I find that one of the things I think a lot of people do wrong when it comes to organizing and productivity is they compartmentalize a little bit too much. And it's really easy to convince yourself you don't have a lot going on if you're only looking at one part of your life. And if you're looking at all, all sorts of parts of your life, sorry, I got very distracted by my calendar there for a second, um, then you are able to kind of see everything all in one picture. So I'm able to see my social events, my business events, my personal events, all in one view. And even though it looks like a lot, it actually helps keeping me from over committing myself in any one place. So here, what I would probably look at is I would compare what I've kind of got on my calendar and what I've got on my schedule to my actual tasks that I have planned. So here's where I kind of toggle back and forth between Notion and my Google Calendar. So what I'm gonna actually look at for my Notion here is I'm gonna look at my week view, um, which of kind of the tasks that are remaining for this week. Now, today and tomorrow, I would actually say with the amount of work I have and the amount of time I have in the morning, the amount of tasks I have here are really, really not too bad. The vast majority of these things, like this one will maybe take me five minutes, five minutes, five minutes, the only thing on here that would take more time is this step. So this is going to be very doable for the rest of the day today. Even for tomorrow, same thing, water plant. So you can see I keep my personal tasks in here as well. I, you can actually even see my cleaning on Saturday that's in here. Um, but a lot of the things that are in here are going to be very, very quick to do. The place I'm seeing a potential problem is on Thursday and Friday of this week. I have quite a few tasks scheduled and actually this one isn't due until next week. So I'm going to remove the weekday tag from it. I have quite a few tasks scheduled on Thursday and Friday of this week. Now, now that I see that I have a cancellation here on Thursday, I'm less worried about my ability to get these things done because actually everything that's on here is relatively quick. However, I am a little bit concerned about Friday. I a thousand percent of going paddle boarding with my friend. I am not rescheduling this again. So I probably, and this is why I do this Google calendar check-in. I probably need to redistribute some of my tasks for Friday. Like I actually don't need to do this step um, this week. I'll actually probably push that out to the following week. So that gets rid of one, one of my tasks. Um, I can probably do, oopsies, I can probably do the vacuuming on Saturday instead. Also ignore all of those tasks that have no, no uh, weekday attached to them. It's because they're for next week and I don't assign weekdays to those until they're the current week. Um, okay, what could I, else could I potentially move? I could probably move this one here. Um, and then that should be much more doable. Like these three things could happen very, very quickly. And then this one might take a little bit longer, but this is actually also just like professional development. I'm working on a certification to kind of continue educating myself. 
So that's the third step in my process is I check into my Google Calendar and I redistribute any tasks inside of my Notion that kind of don't fit with what I have on my schedule, that I don't necessarily have enough time for in addition to the stuff that's actually on my schedule and on my calendar. Okay, so that is our third step. The fourth step, we've kind of actually already done. The fourth step is to redistribute any tasks in Notion if needed. Let's say I've already kind of done the check-in with my Google Calendar. I know that I've got enough time to, I know I've got enough time that particular day to do all of the things that are perhaps in my task management system. So this very, very last step, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of a closer look at the actual tasks that are on each day. And basically what I'm looking for is I'm looking for two things. I'm looking for how long would it potentially take me to do the task? And I'm looking for how, um, I'm looking for how much time do I actually have that day to work on this stuff. So if we were to look at um, this day here, so Monday the 19th, so I don't think I'm gonna have too much time that day to actually be able to work on stuff. So I'm gonna look at each of these and kind of see what each of them are and determine whether or not they're gonna take too long on that day. So outline announcements and advertisements, this is a part of my, um, my content creation workflow. And I will tell you right now, this usually takes me no more than five minutes to do. This one also usually takes me no more than five minutes to do. Um, let's see, what's this one? Outlining content for an article for Brains, because I am an executive contributor for Brains Magazine. Um, this one might take a little bit, as will this one. Writing a blog post, I probably am not going to have time to do that that day. So what I would probably do is I'm just going to move these two things off of that day. Actually, I think I might be able to handle the outlining content. So I've taken care of that day. I'm not going to have a lot of time. So I want to make sure I'm only focusing on really, really quick tasks this particular day. So we've taken care of that day. Let's look at the next day. This is kind of standard for me when it comes to my day job schedule is I usually don't have a ton going on on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So that means I'm going to have more time to work on stuff for my business so I can have a few tasks that are going to be that are going to be a little bit more um, time intensive. So for example, the fact that I have write blog posts and record podcasts on this day, that might actually be okay. However, to have write blog posts, record podcasts, and to write a draft for my Brains Magazine interview, that probably isn't going to be a good idea. I'm actually kind of realizing I probably am just going to want to move this Brains Magazine interview to like way later. So that actually was kind of just me realizing this project shouldn't happen right now and I'm just going to move it back because I have a lot of flexibility in my business. However, these three tasks doable for that Tuesday. Um, and then lastly, uh, let's look at Thursday and Friday. So Thursday, again, I have quite a bit more time. So me being able to sit down and edit the, a YouTube video that day, that should be a little bit more doable that day because I usually have a lot of time on Thursdays. Um, so it's okay that I have kind of a more time intensive task. So essentially you can kind of see what I'm doing is each day I'm looking at, I'm asking myself, how much time am I going to have and how long are these tasks going to take? Those are really the two things that factor into me determining if I need to redistribute. And actually to kind of really nail this in, let's look at Friday because there are a lot of things on Friday. But look at how one, two, three, four, five of these are scheduled. I could probably knock all of those out in less than an hour. I'm saying an hour because for these two, I'm probably gonna have to create stuff. And then my last thing is to write a draft. Very, very doable on that particular day. That is kind of the final thing I do is I assess whether or not the tasks that I have on my plate are gonna be too many tasks for the amount of time I have on that given day. Okay, the very last thing I want to add here when it comes to how I plan my week is I know that there's a lot of stuff out there about how many tasks you should have on any given day inside of your planner. I used to be a person who subscribed to the only have three priorities every single day mentality. And I found that it just doesn't work for me. 
why ultimately it really kind of comes down to the fact that my life has multiple different areas of importance. I have my health, my business, my day job, my relationships, whatever. But even if I'm just focusing on things from a career perspective, I have my day job and I have my business. So the things that are going to be priorities in my day job and my business, those are going to be very, very different things. Like I could pick a priority in my day job and a priority in my business or multiple each day, and I'm still going to have more than three priorities. I think so long as you are practical about how long activities take, which is, yes, going to take some practice, but if you're practical about how long activities take and how much time you have to do those activities, you also, and you also, you know, have some buffer time in your life, then the number of tasks on your to-do list is more negotiable. Does it mean you should put 12 tasks on every single day? Probably not. But if they're all minute, really easy to check off tasks, sure, go for it. So I think that's the bigger thing to take into consideration. If you have three projects on your to-do list every day, that's still going to end up being too much stuff. So I think it's really about assessing how long does something take and how much time do you have to do those things. And if you ask yourself those questions, those are going to be the most important things when it comes to determining whether or not you have too much or too little on your plate for that particular day. All right, that is it. That is all I've got for you today. I really hope you enjoyed those Notion and Google Calendar tips. I try to keep it very simple when it comes to how I plan my week. If you are loving what you're seeing, do not forget to hit that subscribe button. And also don't forget to comment below with your favorite tip or anything you have to add when it comes to how you plan your week. But with that, my friend, I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will talk to you next time. Bye.